Something up? All right. I don't really want to talk about...
been some time. The years have not been kind to us both, it seems. Is it as you expected? I had thought you were the last of the Jedi, as did the Sith, but there are more of them than you know. Your actions have crippled the Order, perhaps destroyed them. No. Perhaps it is difficult to say. For every Jedi slain, for every Sith slain, another rises. But the Order is wounded, yes. Oh yes, your hate has destroyed them. You should be proud of the blood you have spilled, the lives you have ended. But before enjoying this victory, there is something we must discuss first. I have done what I can to keep you from the Jedi and the Sith, but a critical moment approaches, and what you have done is not enough. Master Vrook, despite his faults, was right to come here. I had thought he might have recognized Dantooine for what it was, what had been done there. You are tied to places such as these, you know. Yes, but Master Vrook was unwilling to see what other Masters may have seen. That the echo of Dantooine he felt was inside you as well. They admitted it as much in the Council Chamber after your trial, though they did not understand what it meant at first. They assumed it was a threat that they felt. From one perspective, they were correct. As much as you can form connections to others, such connections exist on the galactic scale as well. It is possible to hurt or sever those connections, to create places in the Force where it is difficult to center oneself, but that is the crudest form of manipulation. It is possible to affect those connections in other ways, by the slightest action. A seemingly minor choice, a small cruelty. The stronger your connection to life, to the Force, the stronger these echoes can be made, and the stronger they are felt. When heard, Force sensitives instinctively seek out the source, are drawn to it to try and form a connection. And when the connection is formed, both become stronger and the influence between them grows. Your companions, many are touched by the Force on some level. And in many ways, they serve out of compulsion and because your connection influences them strongly. It was much like it was for you in the Mandalorian Wars, with many Jedi under your command. But this connection has other consequences. When the Source is wounded, the one on which others draw strength, then they are wounded as well. What one feels, the other feels. And when others die, the scream travels back to the Source. If they occur at the same time, or at the right time, these screams will build upon each other until it is the only sound you can hear. And the deaths of many will cause the screams to build until their pain becomes yours, and you die as well. And that is why during the Mandalorian Wars, you lost your connection to the Force. It was that final battle, the deaths of so many Jedi, that caused you to lose your connection. It caused the wound that you feel now. It caused pain in the Force, an emptiness, a wound that has yet to heal. But it does not end there. If it did, then perhaps the threat that we face would be more manageable. 
This pain I describe, the echo of these acts, is true of planets as well. Tremendous loss of life on a planetary scale can also cast echoes, create a scream, a wound in the force that can travel across the galaxy. It can be felt by force sensitives, and it can influence them, whether they realize it or not. If enough of these echoes are allowed to build in the force uncontrolled, the consequences could be disastrous. The connections of all life would be affected. Yes, in that he was correct. But like Vruk himself, that is incomplete in itself, and it only achieves meaning when part of a larger whole. As I have said, screams and their echoes can overlap, build in strength. And if timed correctly, they will build on each other. The scream will grow. And anything that can hear this scream shall be deafened or killed. With difficulty, and controlling it, well, I do not believe such a thing is possible once it has begun. But in order for this to work, all of them must be timed correctly, must be carefully orchestrated and controlled, from the greatest to the smallest of echoes, even the ones that come from a lone exile echoing across the galaxy. And when that exile forms connections to others as you do, the danger becomes apparent. The echo continues to grow, to travel. Yes, he is correct. You form such bonds easily. The why of it is not important now. All that is important is that you understand that your actions affect others strongly. Anyone can do such things, since life is connected by the Force. Sometimes the connections are faint, but in your case, they are very strong. You instinctively know how to manipulate such connections, to influence others. You have seen it mirrored in those who travel with you. You give others strength to act, but it is also possible to draw upon the strength of others to increase your own. It is similar to drawing upon the Force, as Jedi do. But when it is touched by the power of the dark side, it is something else, something deadly. These Sith we face, they have learned how to do this. It is a technique that has been lost for some time, not seen in the day since the ancient Sith. They can use it to consume other Force sensitives, and at the highest pinnacle of power, use it to consume anything that lives. The blind seer, her master has harnessed this technique, and he is rapidly approaching the height of its power. I fear he may even rival some of the ancient Sith. He is already more of a force than a living thing, a hole in the force that threatens to draw everything into it. And the teaching must die with him, or else all life will be placed in jeopardy. The destruction of the Order, the Masters, it was not an end in itself. I did not expect them to still live. Their presence was knowledge I did not possess. But now this has been corrected, and now the sides of this conflict are as I had thought them to be. There are no more unknowns. But this moment is all that really matters. It was never my wish that you find the Masters, only find yourself, although I did not expect them to still live. I had hoped you would learn something from the Jedi Masters as they fell before you. Not just of battle, but of yourself and the Force. I must know if killing them, if revenge brought you any measure of satisfaction. If seeing them dead has settled the disquiet within you. That is your wish, not mine. There is strength in defeating an enemy, not slaying them. I merely wished them to see that they and their teachings were wrong. That one could not truly understand the Force simply by adhering to the Jedi Code. All I have ever trained have been failures to them. Students who went to fight the Mandalorians, who fell to the dark side, who abandoned their training. To see one that had the strength to best them, that is a moment I will not forget. Yet, it has not been as satisfying as I had hoped. To best one in battle is one thing. To defeat them without striking a blow, that was my hope. Regardless, it had to be done. 
to have such powerful Jedi still live, still be felt in the Force, even on such worlds as they had chosen, was a threat that had to be ended. That is not important. First, let us return to my question. If, by killing these Jedi, if you achieved any measure of peace. It was as I thought. You have failed me, completely and utterly. I have taught you to hear the Force again, shown you the contrast, and yet still you do not understand. This is what you have wrought. Countless murderers, slayers, assassins, born of war that has, as always, taught the wrong lesson. You showed them life without the Force, and instead of showing them truth, power, all you showed them was how the galaxy may die. You are responsible for all of this. Even now, events spiral towards destruction, and there is nothing that can be done because you refuse to listen, to understand. You have seen the effects you have on those close to you, heard the echoes scream across dead planets, and watched as your strength has grown. Yet it is for nothing to have the Jedi Masters brought low by such a failure. There is no victory in that. You have not heard a thing I have taught, and for all I have said, you have never learned to listen. <laughs> Do you feel that exile? It cuts through your defenses, as unprepared for such an attack as you are. Let that pain be a lesson, and a reminder of what you have forgotten. You are my last hope. The only one who could change what is to come. And now you have left me nothing. I shall teach you no longer. Our bond remains, but that is all. This place will hide you from the Sith for a time. Enough to do what must be done. Stay here and die, apprentice, among the wreckage of all that remains of the Jedi. It is a fitting grave until the Sith come to end you. To end. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. You have taught them to bond with others, and then feed on others through that bond. What you have brought is the death of all who can feel the Force. It is your gift to the galaxy, Exile. And unless you hear it, and silence the echo you have caused, then every living thing everywhere that is touched by the Force will die. If I lose her, it will be my failing. It is the failing of the Jedi who followed Revan. It is a failing of their teaching. Soon your ship will come, my master. I will bring her before you, but I will not let you have her. Soon your ship shall come from that which made you.
looking for her. They know who she is now. They'll take her to Telos, and Atris will do what she'll do with anyone she thinks is a Sith. That's what I was afraid you'd say. Is something wrong? You look troubled. I can feel it. That is an odd answer. What did you mean by it? feel as I do because it is my choice. I believe in what we are doing, what you are doing. I am here because I choose to be. I simply do. There is nothing I can show you as proof, except give you my word. Something happened within the Enclave. What is it? Then they do not understand you. That is the danger of being a Jedi. When one separates themselves from others, chooses to lead a life of isolation, denying what makes them a feeling being, it is easy to make such judgments. And such judgments, I believe, are made in ignorance. There is no danger in what you represent, other than your humanity. You change others, but I do not believe it is due to the Force. I believe it is because you are a natural leader, and because you feel connected to the people around you. Where they look at you and see the death of the Force, I look at you and see hope for all life. And that perhaps a life lived without the Force is not the punishment it is believed to be. I will understand if you feel you must go alone. I ask that you do not. Instead, take strength from your connections to others. Do not forsake them, as you did in exile. There are others who need to know you. Telos needs you. The planet and all its people are in danger if we do not stop the Sith now. Then the Republic will fall. We'll attack Telos. They believe many Jedi lie hidden on its surface. We are going there now to aid them. Mikal out. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. Were you here when the Exile arrived? Atris, I have always been here. With the Exile? Yes, both times. Who are you? I was the one who asked her to be exiled. I did as you asked, so long ago. You? You seem familiar to me. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Treya, and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Treya, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have gathered Sith holocrons, Sith teachings from across the galaxy. It is why you have chosen servants who cannot feel the Force. And most importantly, they cannot feel what you have become. I have sought to preserve the Jedi Order, and I have gathered all that I know of the Sith to this place, so I might find them and stop them. I had wondered if any of these holocrons had survived Dantooine. You have taken relics from one destroyed planet to the devastation of another. It was always intended for the Jedi to retreat to Telos should Dantooine be attacked, taking all their lore with them. We could not allow the tragedy at Osis to happen again. Such an act marked Telos for destruction. It is why the Sith came here, though the fleet commanders did not know why. It is why Revan ordered its destruction to mark the beginning of the Jedi's civil war. It was a message that there would be no place for the Jedi to retreat, to hide. I would not be surprised if Revan left other gifts beneath the surface of the planet. Much can be buried beneath graveyards that will never be found. When the Sith attacked... I felt Telos die. Turbo lasers fell like lightning upon the landscape, as they did on Dantooine, and so many died. 
So many voices, screaming in pain. Yes, such acts leave their mark on the galaxy. Their cries travel far, though few can hear them. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith. But there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alicor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did she betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved, the one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought. Oh, she will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. She said you would come here to this place. If you think you can defeat me here, you are wrong. All this collected knowledge, all these teachings of combat and the Force, they're mine to command. And if I must use it to end you, I will. Surrender. You need not die. Very well, let us end this. Kill me. End this. If you will not kill me, then what will you do? Where she walks is hidden from my eyes, but not from those of her kind. It is possible I may draw one last piece of knowledge from these holocrons. You always knew where they were striking from. You always knew. These Sith are spawned of you. Spawned by the Mandalorian Wars. All those deaths. All those Jedi. Their power is to feed on life, until nothing is left except a hollow galaxy, echoing with the screams of the Jedi lost to us. Yes, I had thought she was awaiting me at that place, but I see now that she lied. It was not meant for me, but for you. She has gone there. She is waiting for you to travel to Malachor V, to finish what you started. 
Yes, you are an echo in the Force. A hollow space where it has been wounded. It takes a great act of destruction to create such emptiness. But it can be done. It creates places where the Force is difficult to hear and difficult to find one's way. And you carry it with you, always. Now she seeks to create another echo, a wound in the Force, greater than the one before, greater than the one you caused. It will deafen all touched by the Force until no life is left. You were strong enough to withstand it once, but few have your strength in such matters, especially if they are unprepared. I do not know, but she needs you there. If you choose not to follow, she will murder herself at the heart of Malachor and you will die along with her. Because she proclaims to no longer follow the Sith, that she is something else, something that seeks balance, through destruction. She was a teacher once, and every student that she trained has been a failure and brought death to the galaxy. You are important to her somehow, but I...